This is a little annoying. I kind of left this uh, drained out from here. The dipstick left for like days so I can have no oil. Trip all over the place. Oh, I'm wrong. It was all dripping all over the place. So. I had a, I'm going to dump it from here. This is just a 3 8 um, nut that goes onto there. I mean, a 3 8 uh, driver you can just toss into there. Get in there. Uh-huh. Famous last words. Getting oil everywhere right now. So it's a little, a little stressful. This is the oil drain plug for the for the engine. It's got a lot of Loctite on it too, so that's what that stuff is. Flip that back over. Lots of Loctite on that. And let that drain some. Let's take a look at this linkage together. Because so we have to take this off. And I'm just trying to keep it all together as one big piece, you know. So we have that there. It goes into there. This hooks onto that. This looks like we have ourselves some throttle. No, this is choke or throttle. Choke. This is the governor. Okay, so, all right, so that's how that looks like. So in case we like do anything odd, we can recover. All right, we get a three eighths bolt, bolts when you get out. And uh, it's me to get that metal piece out of the way. So. Carburetor. Okay. So it looks like if I loosen that out, get the carb out of the way, I can get to that. Okay, so this carburetor is going to have to come off. Okay, that's that. Of those. So the carburetor we can looks like we can so I don't want to stretch out that spring. Yeah, let me just disconnect it. Yeah, don't be silly. Okay. Okay, that's disconnected. And looks like it's easier to disconnect from here. Better chance disconnecting it from here. Mm hmm. Absolutely. It's gonna work. Hmm. Leave that connected. Right. This carburetor is kind of loose, right? and that should give us space to like kind of get this out of the way. Yeah, let's do that. 
come back around here. specs for these head bolts. I don't have that. That's kind of important. This looks like we have three bolts on this. This is completely off. So, so like the other ones just a little shorter than the ones I just pulled off. Shorter. Okay. Should have one more. I think holding this on. Right? No, 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 no. That did just kind of rock off. Okay, here's a, this gasket here. I some of you saw it fell. That gasket goes right in the between the carburetor. Right here around the carburetor. So this goes on first and then the gasket. Okay. Alright, so we have this kind of loose, which is what we wanted. Looks like it grounds out right here to kill spark. Alright, uh, let's pull. Let's see the shroud here. See that bolt there? That off. Let's get the spark plug out of here. What are those? Half inch? Probably. See how that worked? Uh, so I did not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a lot of stuff happening here. Okay. I'm gonna do a crisscross pattern. That was loose. Bigger than that. Let's 
work. Wrong tool for the job. Just letting you know. That's a really wet, oily spark plug. It's not running too well. Okay. I just saw a recorded for you a video of a fly. I mean, um, spider chomping away on some sort of insect. Maybe one of you can tell me what what that insect is. I'll be curious to know. Interesting. Some look like they got a little hotter than others. Hmm. Like that one and that one look like they got hot. Right down here, we'll see where the uh, spark plug looks like I missed a bolt, too. Rats, yeah, that's oily. So, I bet you the failures down here on the gasket is the, the, um, the bolts are all wet right there. Okay, so we looks like looks like we have to take this, um, we're gonna have to take a uh, muffler guard off. Yeah, it's probably a three-eighths. Nope, much smaller than that. How about five-sixteenths, what do you think? Correct. negative things someday. Alright, so that's that. That goes like that. Looks like a nice oily shield. Those, just so you know, those are like those kind of uh, star-like nuts like that on that. So that's out of the way. Now the, uh... Remember this governor thing stays here in between. So you, when we put it back together, it won't, it won't, uh, 
Don't be too confused. Okay, let's, let's get that out of there. I have to clean that. Ugh. Okay, so what do we have? We have one more bolt. So I'm going to say that we'll see it immediately, well, where the failure has happened. It looks like, uh, if we can unplug that. Not really. It's just a wire hanging on for its dear life. But see, all right here, these bolts in this bottom of the head are all wet with oil. So that ref means to me that, uh, And that's where the failure is on the gasket. They are all the same. Hmm. Oh, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> what is going on here? All right, let's... So you can see that the oil uh, was a seeping past uh, one, two, three, like this corner right here. And everything else is dry, so that's where the gasket was failing. And uh, you can see, like right there. All right, we got to get this gasket off. But this is the part number for it: six nine two two four nine gasket cylinder head. And I hope it's the right part, right? Let's just double check before, before we proceed. I don't like that, it's bent. So that's the right, right part. Okay, let's get this off. All right, so these are. Okay, so that's that. What do you think, a candidate for a little ultrasonic cleaning? It's pretty nasty. Actually, might be the best way to go. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I thought I was going to clean it off and call it a quits, but no. Let's do a good job. Let's clean it all properly, and I'll just like. So we're pretty lucky that this is a top dead center. Yeah, we should probably just go ahead and start cleaning this. Oh yeah. By the way, you can see look one, two, three. That's where the oil is. Uh, just get in by. Now I might have some failure in the uh hmm. this engine needs to be kinda like rebuilt it looks like, doesn't it? But we're not doing that. Right, but looks well it's gotta it's a whole other project, you know, you gotta open up engine to see what's going on with that. Let's put some WD-40 on it. Looks like we need something that spins. 
a lot of carbon on this. That's what I'm going to do is uh, use this brass wire wheel here. Just kind of. There's oil everywhere. It's bothering me. This is WD 40. I'll be cleaning that for a while. You see what I'm trying. So I want to try one more tool on this. Yeah. Now this pad, right? I don't really trust this pad against aluminum. I think it does remove material. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, just kind of. I just want to focus on top of the piston. Side, bring it back.
So this uses um, 140 uh, inches per pound, which converts to 11.66 feet per pound. And uh, this engine is uh, a 9000 series, so it's 9067 series, that's how I know. So you gotta look up your uh, engine block information. You get that information from uh, the side of the engine over here. I might not see it. Well, anyway, it's on the side over here. It has it has this, this the number and the date of manufacturing right here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and talk. So when you do this, take a nice long continuous uh, swing. So you don't want to you don't want to stop, and you need to go in a cross pattern. You don't have to go all the way at first. So. These are two passes. Then I'm going on a crisscross pattern. This should be the final, final. Let's double check the torque. When you're done with your tool, make sure you set that to zero because you don't want to have any spring-loaded action on it. It'll make this uh, uncalibrated or miscalibrated. Have a little those grooves on it. 
I'm assuming they kind of bite into the aluminum. That's what they're for. Sixteenths should work. So we gotta kind of clean this off here. and there's a gasket that goes right in between there. In fact, there are some witness marks, so you can kind of use those to help remind you of oops where they went. issues here with like oil contamination. Hmm. Let me just uh, make sure. Sorry. Mm. Oops. Might want to cut that rag a little. feels better. Now I want to just let you know, this the, the status of this engine is not good. Uh, what we just did to the head gasket by itself would be awesome if the uh, engine didn't leak, but the engine absolutely needs to be rebuilt. Uh, the uh, piston rings, I'm, I'm assuming, has, all, has, all, has failed. So. See where this linkage goes. And so, one thing at a time. So, that spring, so I was like stuck to the magneto. I'm gonna have to figure out some stuff here. Okay. We should uh, 
put these screws back. So these are, uh, no, they're not 5 eighths. I mean, 5 sixteenths. So these are three eighths, so we're gonna put our three eighths drive on here. Three eighths half inch drive, sorry. <sighs> two of those. Figure these out. Use one of these. Don't forget that.
you know that feeling you get? This feeling. Like, uh, something's not right. There's some bolts that shouldn't be there, <laughs> right? Uh, well, I kind of had to stop. They go right here. One's here, right? And these are, uh, what are they? Uh, three eighths. I'm gonna have to take the carburetor off. Because, uh, the other one's right there. Yeah, let me do that and, uh, can act like I'm civilized. Okay, so I'm gonna loosen that, uh, carburetor up. I don't know how much I'll be able to go. Let's remember all these, um, Yeah, yeah, that's better. That's not too bad. Or not. I have to use a wrench on that. Let's... It's not touching down. Hmm. You know what? I just think I solved the problem. So this looks like it's just too long, right? Here's the carburetor. Oh. See that? That shorter one? You can see? That shorter one goes down here. carburetor one, this longer one, is up here. Wait, ah, loosen this up. I'm a hot mess today, ain't I? So, gotta keep it loose so I can get access to this. Because this probably is also the same situation. This is the shorter one. Longer one. Make sure your rubber uh, o ring stays where it's supposed to be. Take that, put that up there. Uh, I'm gonna double check that so I don't cross thread it. It feels kind of weird. Oh no, come back. Can you see? Yeah. Hope we can. Yeah, looks like you still can. Haha! <laughs> I got this a thousand drops later. Okay, I can feel a, uh, you know you can tell when your body's awkward? Oh, let me, uh, just kind of get a feel for this. That's gonna fall out, oh, whatever. Let's maybe hand tighten it first. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think my hands on it. See how wobbly that is? That's that's these are wobbly um, extensions. I got this to uh, do an oil pan on a Subaru. It's a game changer. I highly recommend you get these wobbly extensions. This gives you a little bit of dexterity that you can't get um, with just a straight extension. It doesn't. Uh, that just goes straight back. You know. I 
and mysteries. No! I messed up again. Hold on. Loosen up the carburetor. It's like you gotta get the order right here, you know? Or else. Let's try this again. Four times. You'll get it right. It's kind of like my date in life. Not crazy the first time. Not crazy the second time. Not crazy the third time either. Oh, what the heck. Let's try the end for the fourth. Short term memory, broken hippocampus. Who knows what it is? And here we are. Pain and suffering, legal issues, and a whole lot of like shade. Alrighty, here we go. I'm loving it. Alright, good. That looks. That feels more realistic. All right, so let's see what we can do here. Uh, we have something else we gotta try to figure out. Okay. Um, so we got a 10. Uh, we need to put on, right? Remember this friend of ours? Yeah, sure you do. You probably wanna sit you up a little better. I think, I think you, you deserve it. I just want to show you something, uh, this is a, a mistake, not a mistake, something that was like really confusing for a while. So this is the uh, governor arm that's inside of the engine, right? And, you know, it governs, that's what the word governor means. So it governs the RPM based on load, right? So as the load increases, it does that, right? It has to sit in between this. First time you see this, you're just like, what the heck is this weird thing and where does it go? I just want to let you see what it looks like, you know, so you can get a feel for what's going on. The spring kind of pulls it back when it's not, uh, when it's in an idle position, okay? So, uh, let's see here. Uh, we have a couple, uh, funny fasteners. We gotta kind of get these, I don't know if I should pour them in here, make them much easier to access. What do you think? Make our flow a little easier. I usually put them in the bag in between projects, you know, so I don't lose them. So, one of the nice things about making videos is that you get to see, sometimes, you know, truth is, like, I, you know, I have three, three things I'm fixing at a time, and I, I get, I just get, I get a little, uh, forgetful, as they say, just a little. Yep. Back off a All right, so we want to put this, this top tin on, right? And it has this thing. So you'll notice that uh, it's got some witness marks right here. It's like a clamp, right? So these two tabs go behind, and this one goes in front. So it goes like that. Sorry behind and in front, and then this goes like, I'm sorry, again, behind and in front, and it just kind of squeezes onto this like that. Okay, All right. Now, this pull start, I gotta try to, just kind of line it up a little bit, because it gets a little weird right here, so I pull this here, hopefully it'll, it'll make sense, because that's the uh, wire for the uh, spark plug. So kind of, you want to go down. Remember, this is going to have to line up, so, in there. So let's see how easily that'll be. Hmm. You know what? This goes probably on after. So. How can we get this on here? My question was, does this, is this in front of this or behind it, you know? So I was a little confused about that. Something like that, right? A couple of 
holes. Okay, let's grab it. Just, uh, kind of see how it looks. How is this? Mm hmm. Far easier said than done here. That doesn't look like it's going to be on top of that. It looks like it's going to be behind it. Like that. Okay, there you go. We're getting there. Alright, right. let's have to pull that pull start to get it on. Okay, so that's all dropped down, right? Okay. Alright, so this here slides on. That gets bolted there. Okay, gotcha. All right, so what do we have? We got some funny fastener action. I need to figure this out. It's a little dark. So we had a couple of these. We had, uh, we had one, two, two in the back. This short one. So that little piece that kind of uh, overlaps. Let's try to find all these. I think that's right. Okay, so yeah, there we go. So we have, okay, this is where it gets interesting. We have three of the same size, two in the back, right? Does that make sense? What I'm seeing in there? Yeah, sure it is. So I am, I think these longer ones were up front. You see? These longer ones are up front. <laughs> Famous last words, right? Alright, here we go. And then right here should be the sh these shorter ones that are in the back. I tend to keep everything kind of loose, so I'm not really sure what kind of shenanigans I'm going to encounter. I saw this awesome sci-fi movie last night. Highly recommend it. It's called uh, she She's More Gifted Than Everyone Else, I think it's called. It's a British, uh, I think it's based off of a comic book, but it's this little kid, she's a zombie. It's a zombie movie. Boy, but this thing is amazing. She, she's, she's, she's really gifted. She looks like she's probably like 11 or so. And, uh, she, she's, uh, one of many kids that are, uh, infected. But they're different from the other zombies because they are, they were born, unborn. That is, so that means mom was pregnant. They were mo they were still in gestation period when when mommy was became, was a zombie. Then mommy died because the kid ate its way out of mommy's womb. Kind of kind of horrific, right? Well, either way, all I can tell you is that this is friggin' epic, man. This this movie is like a game changer. What is this? Three eight. I'm gonna get the name for you so you can. Uh, you can totally uh, check it out. It's rated uh, currently. Uh, it's rated as a 6.6 .6 in IMDb, which is fairly low, lower than my standards. But it's sci-fi, you know. Come on, it's some. You know, it's you're scraping the barrel with sci-fi nowadays. When it comes to quality. Getting much. You ain't getting much. You take what you get. Unless you're making it yourself. It's usually how it works, yeah. No complaining. If you ain't doing it yourself, don't complain. You are the only one that really has the ability to get your quality assurance exactly the way you want it.
pretty much why you do it. Learn to do things yourself, you know. You're invulnerable to all the crazy crazies. People not doing their jobs. <coughs> Corona. Too crazy. So we're going into aluminum. Okay, that's done. That's done. And check. All right, so we got the gas tank we got to put back on. It kind of goes like this, right? And we have uh, three fasteners up top, one in the back. But there's a little like a guide pin, like right there. Uh, you can see. Hold on, right here. It's a good guide pin. See that? And that kind of helps you line it up because it slides into that hole right there. So you can just. Move it over until it gets into place like that. Oops, sorry. Okay, so what we have is uh, three uh, five sixteenths. They look like this. We have three um, three of them. To sip, take a drink. Why does it not feel right? Hmm. Yeah, something doesn't feel right. Feels like there's through something else on top of this. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if this is the right fastener. You know what, it might be, I don't know, let me double check. This is just, it's too, uh, it's too, uh, it's too long. Yeah, this couldn't be right. You know what, it's not these, it's this. Uh, I think it's these. Yeah. I have four of them. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. It's uh, four of those. The reason why I just figured it out um, is four of those. See how wide they are right there? 
Uh, this is a little wider before it gets tight, so... Let me see, I bet you... Uh, yep, 5 sixteenths. So. Yeah, that's better. It is hot, and I love it. Okay. So that's, that's that. Right here, it's a nice long, longer version. And it goes into here. Yeah, that's different size. Three eighths, most likely. Yep, three eighths it is. I think the name of the movie is called She's Better Than Us. That's it. Yeah, it's a British movie. British zombie movie. Amazing. Highly recommend it. I've never read the comic books, but uh, the reviews are out. Yeah, if you've seen it, apparently it's good. All right, so I think I think that's about right. I'm not really sure. The gas tank. Oh, there we go. Let's put this on. So this slides into there. I totally made a mistake. This gas tank should not go on before you put the oil dip stick in. So I was gonna two steps forward, three steps back. Eh, I might, might, might be able to leave that on. All right, here we go. Noise pollution. Uh, this uses one of those same uh, two stairs, two stair bolts. This is a five sixteenths. Then you put put it back together. You saw how to do it. So just okay.
right, so we have three of these. Uh, these are nine... nine millimeter uh, bolts, hex bolts. Let me just double check that. No, there's six. There's six millimeter hex bolts. Okay, so one was really long and the one's really short. The really long one's over here on this side. Let's see we catch that one first. Now that catches into a half inch nut like that. So got it. Have a washer. Let's see, I should have a washer. Okay. There's no washer. It does not look like right. You know why? It's because <laughs> these are so long because they go through the pressure washer. Okay, let's get that pressure washer out and stick it on there. So we can... Our new shiny pressure washer. Now you're excited. Okay. Don't lose anything. <sighs> hmm. An injector. Where's that come from? All right, we'll have to figure that out. Put that in the box. Okay, so how did this go? You want to come over and help me? <laughs> Life would be a lot easier with a little help on that. Okay. Let's get those ready. Okay, so we know that this has to come out the back. Like that. And the longest bolt here. Hmm. Anybody think what I'm thinking? Yeah. Alright. You know when you do we had a we should uh we should coat that shaft a little bit of uh anti Oh we're gonna put some anti seize uh, here. up your angle. Right in here. Because what happens is this thing becomes a beer to take off in the future. So the next mechanic. So that'll that'll help pay it forward a little. Okay. And you see that key? I'm gonna get that lined up. So. Looks good.
Give it a couple pulls. Let me just test it. All right, it spins. Nothing's. Put this air filter back. Now, this is a breather hose for your crankcase. So make sure that that is on like this. So I'm gonna be able to. Okay. This is a crankcase breather hose that goes onto there. Make sure that they're connected. All the difficult ones. So usually the ones you gotta catch first. Sometimes one difficult one makes another one difficult. Place that with this. This is a Briggs and Stratton 491588S. So, 
491588S. It just so happens that this seems to be the same exact size that's on the Hondas too, so... Go, go, Gadget Flathead. Nope. That's Phillips. Okay. Couldn't be easy, could it? No, definitely couldn't be easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Opinions. So many opinions, so many experts, so many observations and no solutions. When you put forward a solution and people attack you. It's a weird world we live in, you know. We're almost there. Alright, we gotta get a spark plug in there. What do we have? Got a new spark plug. Hmm. Briggs and Stratton, well, interesting. Briggs and Stratton seven oops sorry seven nine six one one two mm, I bet it's the original spark plug. Yeah they're the same. Alright. This is a thirteen sixteenths.
So at this point, you can kind of uh, abandon the rest of this video. But if you didn't, if you don't want to, you're going to stick around. It'll be awesome. I want to see what's inside of this thing and see how it works. Want to join me on that journey? All right. Well, uh, listen, thanks for hanging out. Either way, I can say my, say my uh, goodbyes. It was fun working with you. Hope you had a fun time. Hope you learned something. And uh, if it was fun for you, don't forget to, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right. So let's pull this apart. Uh... This isn't a, don't know the anatomy of a water pump at the moment, not fully. So this is a, this is a, a unloader valve. So let's pull this unloader valve off. So. This one? I don't think we did, did we? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we ever actually pull this off. We pull this off, but not, not this. Mm. Interesting. If you have one of these uh, pressure washers, I can guarantee you you're, uh, you're going to have a leak in that engine, that Briggs and Stratton engine. They all leak, every single one of them. That's, it's unbelievable. It's like this should be like a recall on those things. Either way, it's disposable culture, so I would avoid anything with that engine. Okay, this is what we usually do. We actually pull this off usually. Well, that's interesting. So that was in there, and this was on top of that. Okay. Now this might have been the problem, but because this didn't move much. I don't really know for sure because I don't have a good function example. These are 14 millimeters. Do you want to pull that off first? Yeah, let's do that. Remember, water wouldn't go past here. We'll soon find out. Let's uh, let's label these. That is a plastic nut, by the way. I knew that was a little hard to pull, so I'm going to give myself a little bit more leverage.
two, three, three. Now you don't need to label that one, obviously. What else is left? Those are 14 millimeters, I don't know if I told you that. All right. That was an, in, it's an injection for, uh, sorry. It's a chemical injection. What's behind this door? Is that 14? Door number three. Inside of here, we need to inspect. Uh, before we do that, let's uh, let's get rid of. Let's pull it off of the. Uh, let's separate it. This is a uh, number six hex. And we have three. Top. Just do a little bit of, at a time because you don't want to. Warp the uh, aluminum head. Because <laughs> wherever the uh, the loosest part is going to be the part that's holding the most um, tension. And I like this one to crack them loose a little bit. And then I think, uh, a lot of shoot. That is. So I'm probably going to watch this other sci fi movie. It's a vampire movie. It's about two women own a hotel or something like that. It's rated pretty low. It's like a 5 point something on IMDB. 5.5 maybe. So it's pretty low. But I'm curious. I'm fascinated by, by the movie. When you rebuild these, right, usually I've seen so far, you get a kit. And inside this kit, you know, they're, they come in different formats, so you get new, new, um, whatever these plastic things are, I don't even know. But you get new ones. So the point is to try to figure out what does failure look like on these things. See, I can tell you right now, this concerns me. See this grease there? Where's that from? That, that, that shouldn't be there. That, that tells me that's my first clue, or right, that something's not right. You know? 
Well, anyway, these come out. There's a way to pull them out, but I don't know, just the ink on it. Yep, this is not good to do. Okay, so it looks like you'd get a, a new one of these o-rings. Okay, and. How does that sit? It's because it has a groove. Oh, let me zoom down more. Okay, so I'm not really sure how this works, you know, other than until it has a groove. This sits like that. So it's kind of flush against it. This O-ring feels like any old O-ring. That would come out down there too. Either way. Right, so go like that. Cut that up. Probably like that, right? What do you think? Flat side down like that, maybe. Uh, let's pull this one out. So, so we get. Yep, flat side is down. Interesting. You can also buy this whole unit too. I've seen, I've seen the uh, this come in pieces. It's usually like ten, ten or twenty dollars less than the entire new one. So I'm not really sure why someone would just buy this part instead of the new one. Let's try this one. That just feels like I'm gonna poke myself. Surprise! At this point, I can tell you, I'm damaging it. Hmm. Okay. I don't know what I'm looking for. What, what does that do? Let's just keep that out. Curious. Alright. So that's that. Okay. That's what that looks like. Over here. Okay. These are also replaced. So we can see there's like buildup in this thing right here. Hmm. In the light, maybe? Mm -hmm. Either way, there's buildup right here. If you can see it, you can check. There's an angle. Some water, hard water buildup. Could be calcium or, or some magnesium or, or both. There's another uh, mineral that kind of builds up when you have lots of hard heart if you're in a hard water area okay hmm. 
Okay, so those would have to pull out. Now, when we worked with this, it was not a. Uh, it was not. Letting water get past here. Hose comes in. Pressure comes up from here. But it wouldn't. Check valve. This is where it got stuck, right there. I don't see anything. All right. Let's put that there. This. Now these. Right. Okay. This. These. Go. Um, up and down inside of here. To help build up pressure. Build up water pressure. My problem is. Kind of unsure. Is, my, is, is that seal get? You know, I was saying like you seal the oil here. I think that's a problem, you know, because this motor might have oil in it already. Hmm. up and down as expected. So. Alright, well listen, I just wanted to pull this apart with you. not really sure um, what else to uh, think about, look at, other than you know you get a rebuild kit, you get a whole bunch of uh, gaskets and you parts for these things, these plastic parts. And uh, this is uh, the water pump is made by Anovi Riverberry. It's an Italian um, company, and this is a model RMW, and it requires 2.2. Um, it's a probably gallons. Uh, I believe that's what that means. I could be wrong. <laughs> I can always be wrong for everything. Okay, great. So that's it. Just wanted to pull it apart, get a feel for how these things are put together, how they fail, and like how what we can do to possibly get another one, you know, if we wanted to actually try to rebuild one. All right, thanks for watching. See you next I want to explain something. I just kind of noticed. Okay, so in here... So, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there are little tiny holes down inside of there. And uh, they're on the side also over here. No, are they on the side? Hmm. There's definitely one coming in from there, and. I'm going to wager, right, that this right here is clogged, right in here. And that's why this pump is not working. Yep, that's why. Alright, well I just wanted to share that.